Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're here in the VAB today because I think I have solved our uh, launcher issue after many, many hours of uh, fidgeting and playing around and trying to figure things out. So, from the uh, Davidson Nichols Center for Abstract Sciences, I would like to present to you the DN1A. This is uh, poised to be our new heavy-duty launcher. Um, it's extraordinarily capable. Um, this this is the ship that we just uh, launched to Jupiter to do atmospheric surveys. I've just kind of used it as a default. It seems to be about the median weight for things that we've been putting atop the RA-9. And uh, currently, I... well, I'll talk more about the fueling later. But, uh, yeah, I guess we'll get to the Delta V things after I've explained everything. So, this week I learned a lot about uh, structural fractions and how much of the weight of a spacecraft goes into just the structure of a part versus the fuel that it contains. So starting off all this you've seen before, uh, just below it we have kind of a revamped HV stage in only that it is a little bit shorter and a little bit wider than the previous HV stage but it contains roughly the same amount of fuel it has about the same amount of burn time and is using the same four RL10 series engines. Uh, this is probably the smallest upper stage the DN1 will ever see. Uh, DN1B, DN1C future models will probably use a bit heavier, uh, more powerful upper stage once we get uh, better RL10s unlocked or if we have uh, I considered a single J2 upper stage, but that seems uh, a might bit excessive considering the capacity to orbit of this rocket. And just below that, you will see that I have foregone the kind of Soviet styling of the RA-9 for a more uh, Americanized something. But uh, like I was saying with structural fractions before, uh, I have decided to go with two boosters instead of four because the amount of weight put into structure is obviously going to be half of that of the weight put into four boosters even if their total like sizes were comparable so uh, first about the core stage this is a single one big single tank again because the fewer parts you use the less of a structural loss you have uh, about your um, your parts and whatnot and powering it are two J2S engines. They produce about uh, 1,100 kilonewtons of thrust apiece, uh, obviously once they get higher up into the atmosphere, but they are lit on the ground. This whole mess here was just to make the uh, rocket look a whole lot less awkward because the bells on those J2s are just tiny compared to the uh, massive tank above them. But uh, really, other than for aesthetics, this whole assembly doesn't really do much. Uh, the boosters! Uh, are two boosters of three E1 engines apiece. They're just the standard E1s that I've been using forever. Uh, not the E1 Advanced because we don't have the technology for them yet. Uh, they will burn in total for about two minutes and 20 seconds, which is well below the two minute 45 second threshold that the E1 engines have. And uh, again, I've consolidated from four boosters down to two for the structural fraction of weight. Uh, I have also switched the tanks on this upper stage. I should have mentioned to balloon cryo instead of just standard cryogenic tanks. The weight savings on that is uh, lots, like <laughs> several tons. You see the dry mass on here is 858.6 kilograms, whereas before it was probably uh, three and a half tons. And just that weight savings alone pro provides a huge difference. All of these tanks also, well, this core tank is balloon cryo. The uh, boosters themselves, there are three tanks here. Uh, that bottom flare piece, the primary, and then the nose cone are all just standardized balloon tanks because, again, the weight savings on those were absolutely immense. Uh, the rocket in total comes in at just under 900 tons, meaning we're going to have to fuel the boosters on the launch pad if we want to get under our weight limit, as I have it set up now at 679 tons, because these boosters are sitting at about half fuel currently. Um, but to the numbers! 
So uh, the J2Ss have a rated burn time of 10 minutes. I've got that extra 8 seconds in there because their ISP at sea level is just so horrible that they just kind of pour fuel through them for the first minute or so of flight until it gets higher in the atmosphere and that ISP really starts to kick up. I think it goes up to about 430 seconds, which is quite nice. And uh, these numbers, not quite accurate. This uh, center tank itself uh, has almost uh, 8 kilometers per second to delta V. It's just uh, considering with the booster weight on, it's going to give us 751. And with them not, the booster's not fueled, minute 10 seconds, like I said, they run for about 2 minutes 20 seconds. Then we ditch them, and then after, after they ditch, the uh, vacuum delta V of the core stage goes way up. But all in all, in test flights, I was able to put this entire HV upper stage completely unignited into about a 200 kilometer orbit which provides us a huge advantage as far as getting things interplanetary. Um, and, but what I did not check was the build time for such a rocket. 91 days. I'm assuming it'll go up for the second one we build because currently we have a J2 or J2 or 2 sitting around scrapped from our shuttle program that are just in the parts inventory. Obviously it's not specific on where it lets me apply those things. But um, we will be putting this into uh, almost immediate service. We have a launch for Mars coming up in about 40 days or so. Um, that's just that Mars 1 that we built a while ago. That's going to go up on an RA-9. But after that, in about uh, 190 days or so, we have a window for Saturn. And this will surely be taking point on those missions because, wow, can this thing put a lot of stuff into orbit. So that's our new launch system. I really can't wait to get it out and start showing it off and putting some things into a uh, nice interplanetary space with it. So um, sorry this one's a little quick. This is going to be kind of like a bonus episode. I will probably have two going up today, just in case you're wondering why this was just a bunch of me talking here in the VAB. But um, I'm approaching a new design philosophy. I'm prototyping new rockets and I think finally we have something that uh, can replace or really kind of one up the RA-9 as far as our deep space missions. The RA-9 is still much better suited for things a lot closer considering the price tag on this. Um, it is quite a bit more expensive than the RA-9. I think launching this setup on the RA-9 was something like uh, 48 a uh, thousand credits, whereas this comes in at a beefy 71. But uh, again, for the the margin of cost versus its deliverable to orbit, I think the uh, I think it's totally worth it. So, super excited to get this thing flying. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed me talking in the VAB for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, all right, that's gonna do it. Thank you very much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you very shortly in the next one. Until then, see you later.